Inshallah, without any further delay, I would like to do the honors with myself and Shaykh Umar to announce, to bring to the stage Shaykh Abdullah, Mufid Rahman, and our brother Khabib, <laughs> the Eagle, Normago <laughs> Merav. Louder, one more time. One more time. One more time. I want you guys to say, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. One more time. One more time. Send me location. Send me location. All right, sit down, everybody. Please have a seat. Good, good, good. Let it go. Everybody, please have a seat. We need to respect our guests. Please have a seat. We won't start until everyone's situated. We're all excited. We have, thank you. Uh, we'll take all your love messages as the program concludes. Please hide your love. We all love him. We want to enjoy the program. We have to respect the audience. We have to respect the guests that join us. We have Khabib Numegamarov here joining us from Dagestan, Russia. One more time, round of applause, guys. <laughs> easy, easy, that's it. Guys, uh, we have Mufti Abdul, uh, Mufti Abdul Rahman, who is joining me. Give him a round of applause, too. Come on, guys. He'll be joining me for the Q&A. He doesn't trust my questions, so he'll be monitoring my questions. Inshallah, we'll start. Please sit back. You guys will have a chance. Those guys in the VIP section, the audience will also have a chance to communicate. The fans will talk to Khabib also. Sit back and relax, guys. This is the main event. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum, dear brother Khabib. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, everybody. <laughs> this guy. You look, yesterday you look like a little bit shy guy, but. You become like Bruce Buffer today. <laughs> this guy. Mashallah. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much, Miftah Institute, to invite me here. And thank you guys for coming. I'm very good to see you guys. I, this is my first time here in Michigan. Uh, and uh, thank you. Okay, guys, we're going to have to continue this Q&A, and we'll have to respect. So if you guys can promise me not to say nothing for the next half an hour, we'll have a great time. Jazakumullah khair. Um, I'd like to ask our dear guest, the champion, Khabib Numegamarov, who's joining us for the first time here in Michigan. How did you find the freezing cold weather here in Detroit, Michigan, as you arrived? Oh, it's not, it's not a surprise for me, you know, because uh, I'm from uh, Dagestan, Russia. There's cold right now, too, you know. And uh, snow is nothing new for me. You know? um, and uh, how I find what? The weather, cold weather. Ah, cold weather. It's good, good. You know, it's like, of course, I like uh, when it's like plus 30, 35. This is my favorite weather, but what we can do? Brother Khabib, Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. This is brother, inshallah, I'll try to keep him normal for the next hour and a half. <laughs> Everyone in the crowd knows that he gets a little crazy once, on, once in a while. I'm not here to ask you any questions. I'm just here to make sure he doesn't ask you any bad questions. <laughs> That's all I'm here for. So we were speaking yesterday uh, at dinner about Dagestan. And people, they over here in the audience would love to know where Dagestan is, what the history is, 
and you know they, they see videos of you running up and down mountains in Dagestan and, and wrestling bears. So they would like to know something about your country. Please tell us that. Uh, Dagestan is uh, like, uh, it's mean like country of mountains. Dag is like mountain, Stan is like country, you know. We have mountains, we have uh, Caspian Sea, you know. We have beautiful uh, food and very good people. And uh, <clears throat> they all love fighting, like wrestling, because wrestling is a like a traditional sport in Dagestan. And uh, I think we have uh, almost like 30 Olympic champions in freestyle wrestling, something like this. I don't count like second or third place. Uh, <laughs> we have a lot. Yeah, we have a lot. This place, we have like uh, not only athletes and good people too, you know. Uh, like, and... Uh, you know what else? We have UFC champion <laughs> there. <laughs> and, um, you told us that there's how many graves of Sahaba over there? Yeah, yeah. We have like uh, in uh, South Dagestan, Dirbent, we have like 40 graves of Sahabis. And um, and uh, and the Islam come to us when uh, it was Umar was Khalifa, like long, long time ago when just Islam start, you know. And uh, and there yeah, is like good people, good weather, you know. Mashallah. I think you guys have to come. Inshallah and, uh, we will yeah. come. He won't come though. I'll make sure he doesn't come. <laughs> I, I you know, we watched you come from Dagestan. Before you came to the UFC we some of us followed you. Why are the fighters from Dagestan turning out to be the champions? Now Islam is running to become the champion, why is this a special? Is it the food? Is it the mountains? Is it the weather? Why are so many champions coming from Dagestan? Mm, it's a good question. I think because uh, like people love sport there. Like right now, we have three contender from Dagestan. Nobody in the world have like not even like countries. They, like even USA, they don't have three contenders. Like fifty-seven. Uh, 70 kilo and uh, 93 kilo, we had three contenders, you know. Wow. And this year they can become champion. Like Islam and Kalaev and Askar, these three guys can become champion from Dagestan, you know. Even USA is not close like this. <laughs> <laughs> I know US, USA is like, uh, like uh, they have so many athletes, you know. And uh, this sport become very popular because of USA because of UFC, and uh, I know this, but right now, uh, like uh, Dagestan, I think very close, very close to be number one place in the world uh, for MMA. I talk about like sport, and uh, I think because, for example, we have best wrestling school, best uh, Ushu Sanda school, best grappling school, in, in Russia, in Dagestan. Like all base guys, they living in Dagestan, they from Dagestan, you know. Even when I w when we watch like amateur competition, they all champions from Dagestan, you know. So a lot of things like, um, even now, like how many, like almost 30 fighters from Dagestan in UFC. But I know like uh, if we can watch like other fighters, who not fighting in UFC, but they level, UFC level fighters, you know. And uh, I think, like, I don't know how to stop this. I know I start this, <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know how to how to stop this because uh, everyone, everybody want to become UFC fighter, become success athlete, you know. But uh, but same time, I told them, mm, not only sport is uh, important, it's very important to study too, you know going to school, university, this is very important too, you know. I think this because uh, people living a little bit uh, poor life, you know, <clears throat> to become success, like sport is very easy way. And uh, I think this is one of the reasons. You, you, once you mentioned, thank you for the answer, once you mentioned in one of your interviews that one of the reasons why the Dagestani fighters are successful is because they come from hard times. And they have to; they have no choice but to work hard and go to the gym, and they don't have too much luxury and materialism. 
And you said that in America, you know, people who come in nice cars, live in nice homes, it's difficult for them to get out and go to the gym and work out. So, you know, this is also proven through Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ where he said, Be aware of getting in too much luxury in a comfort zone. So please expand upon that. What, do you, what did you mean when you said that? Is that a factor? <coughs> yeah, this is one of the factors. And uh, I think, uh, like so many people from around the Russia and around the world, they're coming to see, like, uh, why is, like, Dagestan athletes so success, but I think I think uh, not many people see that when they come because they how they come they come and they land in, in capital city and they stay capital city and they see normal life and they don't understand why but they don't see other life other life is like from village because uh, like for example if you guys come if you guys come you guys are gonna stay in capital city. This like almost same like Detroit or other big cities. Like for example, we have one million people living in capital city, and this is like city life. You know, this is completely different. But what about other two and a half million who are living in village? This is a real Dagestan life. But if you people wanna see the real Dagestan life, they have to come to village. But if they come to village, they cannot stay there. Because they don't have hotels, you understand? And not not many people understand when they come and they want to see, they want to feel real Dagestan life. Uh, they stay in Mahachkala, capital city, and they move. And they think nothing special here. And uh, <laughs> some of the reason I like this. <laughs> because when people don't understand, they cannot learn, you know. Because sometimes you have to you have to keep secret, you yeah, know, yeah. <laughs> some your why you become success, you know, because uh, because I'm from village, you know, I'm from village life, and I know what is this. And I was in capital city, I was in, I know both sides, and uh, I like for more village life because uh, more discipline, uh, <coughs> like uh, like. You understand, you can be appreciated uh, for Allah, for life, for your parents, for everybody, when you know real village life. This is completely different than city life, you know. I think like when you guys come, I'm gonna take you guys to village. Don't think I'm gonna uh, leave you guys in nice hotel in capital city. <laughs> you guys gonna come to I need, village. I, I need a five star hotel. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you guys real life, you know. and. Uh, he will run away. <laughs> um, uh, uh, you don't have choice, but <laughs> <laughs> he smashed my face. If I run away, um, uh, brother Habib, uh, champion. You know the success that you have. There are many factors. I want to just run by a few of them. Your father. You know, such a great uh, influence on your life. You talked about him. Your whole career was around his his influence in your life. How did he raise you, brothers and sisters? And how important is a father figure in your in your life as an influence? Yeah, well, like uh, father, it was uh, like um, very big reason why I become success uh, because uh, because of his uh, view because he understand this uh, and he understand this uh, sport and of course. Uh, he was like very big um, motivation for me, you know, and uh, <clears throat> uh, I think uh, not only in my life, in uh, a lot of lives, uh, like in Dagestan, he was a big part of uh, their life, you know, and uh, he was helping a lot of people around him, not only uh, our village, uh, other other villages, other cities, like, and uh, yeah, father was very big part of my life. You know, there's one scene that I see with you and your dad, and I'm sure the audience has seen it, is when you want to clean your face, that video, and you have your gloves on, and your dad grabs his shirt, his shirt, and he washes, he dries your face after one of your fights. Can you, like that, that can you express the love that he showed you in the ring, outside the ring, what was it like in that moment? Uh, honestly, that moment, like, 
inside the cage. I don't remember, honestly, because I just finished my fight. Like, I just want to clean my face. Like, <laughs> honestly, I don't remember. Then, like, after fight finish, like, everybody sent me this video. Like, uh, this video become very, very popular. Uh, like, inside the cage, I don't remember this. Like, father was always like this, you know, always he take care of me. So, like, uh, he teach me, uh, he teach me uh, to become not only like a good fighter, just become like just good person, you know. And uh, he never say, oh, you have to do this, you have to do this. He just show always. It was a very good example for me, you know. It's... Uh, one one thinks when we talk with our kids and we tell them we have to do this, we have to do this. And other thing, when you talk and when you show by yourself, this is uh, very, very important to, you know, like for example, you can, you can smoke cigarette and tell your kids, oh, smoking is not good, you know. Like, uh, of course, they're gonna look how you smoke. He not gonna listen to you, but if you don't smoke and you say smoking is not good, every day you have to learn. In school, study, training, like when he always with you and show by himself, this is completely different. So, um, since you brought that up, there's many people that are here that have children, and you also have kids. May Allah want to grant them success in this world and thereafter. Um, as first, from a father's standpoint, what advice do you give? fathers and mothers who are sitting here. This brother has a picture of your father right there. Who's that, Khabib? Half-half, half, half, mashallah. I have your father's flag here. Mashallah, mashallah. So um, what, what advice do you give as a, for fathers who are sitting here, especially in this country, how they should raise their children on Islamic values and also the values of, you know, to, of the culture that they have so that they don't get assimilated and they get changed from this culture? <coughs> I think it's like right now is biggest problem, like uh, I think it's like time, you know, it's time because uh, everything going very fast uh, because of all this, uh, with, with all this stuff, I think time go very fast and uh, just don't give them free time, you know, if we give them free time, they... Uh, they're gonna spend this time like on wrong way. I think uh, we have to make them uh, stay busy, you know. Like uh, when I grew up, uh, like my father make me always do like do something. I never was like sitting and uh, just just like how they like to say like just chilling, you know, something. <laughs> I never remember this. Even now, like I'm 33 years old, and uh, even like I'm finished with my professional career, but I never sit in like <coughs> in one city, you know. Like I was in Moscow, then I go Singapore. I come here. Tomorrow I go Miami. After Phoenix, San Francisco, Las Vegas, Riyadh. Like I'm gonna like I'm I'm traveling. You know, I'm working, and it was like my life all like I was living this all, all my life, you know. Every day I wake up, I was training, come home, go to school, come home, go to the gym, come, do homework, you know, it's like father never gave me free time, you know. I think we have to make busy our kids, you know, and uh, give them give them good um, good knowledge, uh, be them good example you know and uh, don't let uh, like phones teach our kids you know we have to teach them <clears throat> you know habib a champion there there was two scenes in your career that are rememberable many scenes are unforgettable one is the poor fight when your dad was on your side he was outside the cage. Well, um, his life was not a movie, scenes. For me, for me, it was a movie. <laughs> it was unbelievable. It was like I was in a dream. It was so much unbelievable. 
So in that moment when you had your father around you outside the cage and you had to have this outside in the United Arab Emirates, that feeling, how did that feel, that celebration? And then I'll ask you the second question. And then when you won against Gaethje and uh, you didn't have your father on your side, how did it feel? Uh, with, uh, with that simple, when I fight, yeah, it was first time in the UFC career, father was uh, on my corner. Because uh, all other fights, when I fight outside, I, outside the Russia, in the US, like Canada, Brazil, on that, uh, on that countries, uh, he cannot come, you know. And uh, I was fighting alone always. Yeah, and when I fight with Dustin Poirier in Abu Dhabi, it was first time when he was with me in corner, you know. Honestly, I feel pressure. I feel pressure when he was with me a little bit. But I remember like when we go to the cage, inside the cage, I look at father and I feel like he is very nervous, you know. Because uh, because I remember, and this time it was 2019, and the last time when he was corner me, it, it was 2011. It was eight years ago. Eight years between us when he was cornered me, you know. And, uh, and I remember like eight years ago, it was different. When I go to the cage, like, and when I go to the cage, when I fight with Dustin Poirier, he was like completely different. Like inside, inside the locker room, he was a little bit different. But when I come to the arena, I look at him, I understand he's nervous. I tell him, hey, how you feel? <laughs> it's like, he say, I'm okay, but I feel he's not okay. <clears throat> I say, everything is gonna be good. I'm gonna finish this guy. Don't, don't, <laughs> uh, don't, don't worry. Okay, wrong applause for that. Yeah. <clears throat> he's like, he's, uh, look at me, he says, stay focused stay on the plan and uh, you know but and i remember like uh, it was in front of him me in front of father it was like maybe two meters maybe very close when uh, dustin tried try to choke me like and uh, i'm like thinking like dustin is like crazy guy he think i'm gonna tap in front of my father <laughs> And uh, and I was like, okay, let him do this. Okay, let him do this. He tried to choke me. I gave him space, you know. And I remember, like, like from I told Islam, he like he like jump to guillotine with the right hand. When I go to the uh, double leg, I'm gonna give him my neck, and then I'm gonna make him tired with this because when you try to choke someone with guillotine, this is takes so much energy, you know. Uh, I know this, you guys don't understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Habib, he's a fighter. No, yeah. no, no. <laughs> Without me on the stage, yes, he's a fighter. <laughs> and I, if I'm here... And, uh, and uh, yeah, like, he tried to choke me first, I move, I come back, like twice I give him my neck. And uh, after that, I I feel him because uh, I feel him like he's finished, you know. And uh, and there, like when father was, it was like an amazing feeling, you know. This is completely two feelings. When I fight with uh, Gaethje, last fight without father, and fight with Pori with father, this is like completely two, two different feelings. May Allah give your father the highest um, place in Jannah. May Allah unite us with him in the Prophet and Firdaus. And uh, I, I wasn't there. Watch, I was watching this. I wasn't, I wasn't around the cage. But when you're punching Conor McGregor in the face, and you said, let's talk. What did you want to talk about? Yeah, that fight I remember like everything. <laughs> Believe me. Yeah, I was uh, like some fights when finish, like uh, you know, uh, because uh, like fighting in our life, like it, like 
example, like when you fight inside the cage, like, like it was last maybe couple years, I really don't enjoy with this, honestly. When I go to the cage, fight, okay, fight, win, come back, you know, go home. It's like next day, like normal day, like <laughs> people come to me, oh, you in the fight, when you next fight, I'm like tired about when you next fight, you know. It's like uh, when it's gonna finish, you know. I really don't enjoy with this, like except this fight. This fight I enjoy. <laughs> this fight, I was like, um, I remember like I, I was waiting this fight, you know. It's like, uh, I really want to fight, you know. On this fight, it's like, okay, like when I fight with Dustin Poirier, I'm like, okay, I'm champion. This is another contender. I'm going to fight with him. And okay, if I beat this guy, people going to say, okay, Habib, we know you better than him, you beat him. Like nothing special, you know. This is nothing to, you know, to show the people like, like even when I fight with uh, uh, Justin Gage, or people say he has very good wrestling, like good defense, good striking, like people talk about like, oh, it, he's good challenge. I'm like, like, okay, they don't know me. They don't understand. Like, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna beat this guy. If I f finish in first round, they gonna say, oh, very easy fight. Okay, let's finish him in second round. <laughs> yeah. Come on guys. Something like this. Of course, I know anybody can lose, like my, but my confidence was like uh, in a high level, you know, because all my life I was training so hard and, and these guys, they already lose a couple times and some of them finish them, some of them choke them, you know, it's like this is nothing special. But when I go to the cage with this guy, I was like, uh, I was there, like my mind, was a very warm fight with him, you know, to show the people uh, who is and who I am, you know. This is completely two different person, you know. Even like we talk about like personality of like, uh, uh, like, uh, like athlete, like uh, I just want to show this guy and me, this, we two different level. Of course, we fight same time, same night, each other, but we're not on same level. I just want to show this for for million people around the world. I was very motivating for this fight when I go to the cage because because of his personality, you know, because of what he represent, because of what he show, because of his uh, like um, because of a lot of things. I think because of. Um, like millions of people around the world like him. I just want to show them the world is completely different than they think, you know. <laughs> so his question was, when you were asking him, let's talk now, what did you want to talk about? Ah, because like I told him uh, in press conference, uh, I'm gonna talk with you, but inside the cage. But in press conference, like I, I don't wanna talk trash about nobody, about you, about your family, about nothing. Just uh, this is very personal. When I go to the cage, I'm gonna talk because because it's very important how you talk inside the cage. Like outside, okay, for example, this guy can talk. Like, what can I do? I cannot fight with him here, right? But when cage close, this is different. He talks a lot when his wife <laughs> is not there. Yeah. Khabib, if you tell these guys right now that you want to beat me up, they will all get excited. So please, no, no, guys. No, I'm tap machine. <laughs> so, um... Khabib, one thing about that fight, and uh, Sheikh Umar is also sitting here. In, at that time when that fight was happening, you know, Muslims in this room and all over the world, we were facing high levels of Islamophobia. People looking at us, and we, we, had, we had no support. We, everyone is there right down the street in Ann Arbor, Michigan, University of Michigan, sisters with the hijabs, um, in university campus all across, the, all, the, all across this country, We've been taking off flights wearing the clothes we wear. And uh, we went to New Zealand. 
Christchurch after the shooting and these people uh, they were only killed just because they believe in one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so when we seen someone like you you know stand for us and give us support I believe Allah gave you a lot of respect because at that moment you know kalimatu haq you said the right thing you gave us support you gave us confidence and that 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 confidence kept a lot of us going as Muslims so I'm not asking you a question I'm just saying thank you for that And my next follow-up question is, this is not finished yet. You know, Connor tapped, Dustin Poirier tapped, Justin Gaethje fell asleep, but the Islamophobes have not tapped. And they're not sleeping. And they're still giving our sisters a hard time, giving the brothers all across the world. So we still have, your, 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 your UFC career is over. But inshallah, this career of yours has to live Inshallah, till you die, inshallah. And that's why we, what do you think, inshallah, you can do for us when it comes to this? What, what do you have in mind? How can you motivate us so that we can support each other, inshallah? What do you have, what, what are your thoughts for that? It's like, very good question. No, it's like, um, like a lot of people, a lot of people who think they just, uh, if they good Muslim, everything is gonna be good. You know, it's like uh, in my opinion, and and we look at history. You know, when you just become Muslim, just say La ilaha illallah, and uh, all like um, hard time is like just beginning. You know, because uh, it's not enough to be just Muslim. You have to be a good example. You know, like for me, it's uh, it's very hard. It's very hard because, uh, like, uh, a lot of people around the world, like, uh, millions of people, you know, it's like, I just was in Singapore, like, a lot of people know me, I just come here, this is different part of the world, you know, Michigan, Detroit, here, a lot of people know me. I moved to California, or Europe, Russia, like, or Middle East. Everybody like people know me. They know this is uh, this is not easy. This is very hard, you know. And uh, everybody have to be good example to people who know them. You know, for example, you guys is popular. Okay, some of the people is not popular, but their neighbors know him. They friends or their kids friends parents they know them you know it's like like everybody have their level to uh, like famous because i'm like for example i'm very high level right like around the world like not only muslim not muslims they know me too you know we have to be good example for islam you know of course uh, islamophobia is like uh, it's uh, it's very popular now you know and uh, around the world a lot of social media they talk bad about Islam, you know, we see this and we understand this, why? Because uh, Allah wanna test us. Allah wanna test us what we're gonna do, how we're gonna do. And uh, we just have to be good. We just have to be good. Even these people talk bad, we just have to be good with them. Because uh, when we look at uh, Sirah, uh, he say what he did, this is very good example for us. Even people talk bad with him, he was very nice, and you know, and uh, we cannot go against them. Like, if they talk bad, we cannot give them back because, uh, because like, we become same. We become so We have to be a little bit high. Then, sometimes I make mistake too, you know, it's like, I become very emotional too. We all love our religion. We all very religious people. I understand, but sometimes we all make mistakes. When we make mistakes, all the time we have to come back and change some things, you know. And uh, <clears throat> and yeah, my my advice for everybody uh, to be good, uh, to be good uh, example for people who know you, you know, to show them. Okay, like for example, how how Islam 
come to Indonesia, you know, it's like more than 200 million people, they have Muslim there, like how, how Islam come to them, you know, because of good akhlaq, because of good manners, you know, not with sword, not with war, you know, like Indonesia, Malaysia, okay, for example, like Pakistan, 200 million people, you know, it's like we have to be good example, you know, show them. Takbir. Yesterday, um, yesterday, um, I think Mufti, Mufti Abdurrahman and Mufti Bohab told the champion Khabib that I, I, I learned Sirah and I teach Sirah. So Khabib, after the conference, he listened very carefully. He's very observing, very smart. And uh, he wants to, now he's sitting next to me and he wants to tap me out. He wants to smash me. So he said, he looks at me after 10 minutes. He said, brother, you know Sirah? I said, yeah. He said, I smash you in Sirah. <laughs> did you say that? And how did you learn the Sirah and why do you love the Prophet so much? Well, it's like, uh, you know, everything for me is competition, you know. Even, <laughs> even if we talk, okay, I just wanna, I just wanna be better than you. <laughs> like on, on good way, you know. You don't but, mean to smash yeah, me. No. <laughs> no, 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 not real smash, but like, like, uh, yeah. Yeah, I love, I, I love read books. I love the history of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, I, I read a lot. I read a lot and, uh, and, I, and I try to learn from the best, you know. I know you, I cannot learn from you nothing in my sport. But like maybe on Syria you can give me some good knowledge, you know. That's why I talk with you, talk, talk. When you say something, I take, I keep, you know. And uh, of course I teach you yesterday a little bit. <laughs> and you know. This is, for me, is like competition, you know, like uh, everything I try to be, I try to, I try to be the best, you know. This is what we have to teach our kids. They have to be the best, like that doesn't matter what they're doing, doesn't matter. This is like, okay, sport, okay, be the champion. Okay, if you do other things, because not everybody can be like athletes, this is very hard. Okay, and in other way, okay, just be the best, we have to teach them. We have to show them good example. Be the, be the like hero for our kids. You know, give them good good education. This is this is how I grew up. You know, that's why yesterday I tried to be better than you, but it was very hard for me. I understand because I was on your territory. <laughs> that's why. When you looked at him yesterday, you said he's your opponent, <laughs> and I and I'm the teacher. But no, he's. He's, mashallah, been teaching Sira for a long time. So, Bajan, inshallah, it's hard to smash you in that one. Uh, brother, brother Khabib, one thing about, uh, you mentioned in one of your podcasts, or it was, a, it was a podcast, an athlete that you looked up to throughout your career, uh, Muhammad Ali, rahmatullah alayhi. And for most of us sitting here, if not all of us, he was our icon. Um, he was someone that we all looked up to. We read, we, read, we read his books. We have people in this audience who are very knowledgeable about him. What, what, part of his life motivated you the most. And one thing that he did was he used his platform and he was not scared, he was ready to jeopardize his career, but still speak the truth and stand for the truth. You know how difficult that is. So what was something that motivated you from his career and why do you look up to him so much? You know, it was like, like athlete, of course. I learned a lot from, from Muhammad Ali and uh, <clears throat> For me, is he is the he the best athlete of all time. Nobody like nobody even close. What he did, what he did for his people when he was champion, and uh, these guys take from him his best three years, best of his age. Mm, they take off his belt, I think, and like three years or something like they put him in jail. You know, it's like when he was young, when he was Olympic champion. And uh, when he was current champion, but he come back and, uh, you know, it's like what he did. I don't think someone can do this again. You know, it's like maybe someone can become close, but uh, but he is going to be like always his number one athlete myself for myself, you know. And uh, uh, and I think uh, like a lot of I feel I feel a lot of athletes around the world like they become they become famous. I talk about Muslim athletes. Uh, like uh, most of them, they shy to show 
like they are Muslim. I don't understand why. Uh, it's my opinion. You have to show, you have to explain people why. Why you Muslim? Because of what? Because when you come, when you come famous, you have good platform to talk, you know? Like, like for example, like a lot of like uh, imams, they have very good knowledge, good akhlaq, but they don't have platform, you know, sometimes. Some, <laughs> you know, it's like sometimes it's like it's a, uh, it's very hard to explain. But uh, I know a lot of athletes; they don't, they don't wanna show this. I don't mean it's like you have to go and uh, screaming with people. I am Muslim. No, you have to show by yourself, because right now it's like s so many media around the world. They talk bad about our religion. You know, just show them. This this religion not about like bad things. This is all about good things, you know. This is all about yourself, about people, about health, about about uh, about everything, you know. And uh, uh, and uh, when we become success, it's like our job. Sometimes explain people. Sometimes show them. Uh, Islam is all about good things, you know. Long applause, guys. Long applause. So, so you have you have one part where you're such a good example before the Connor fight. And you say, Alhamdulillah. You're proud. You say to them they don't like it. Then after the fight, you fly over like an eagle. So what happened? Uh, mm, <clears throat> yeah, before fight I was very calm because uh, I know uh, I have to keep my energy inside the cage because if I'm gonna if I'm gonna lose my energy or give someone energy before the fight, uh, like inside the cage I'm gonna be empty, you know. And uh, when you go to the cage, you need good energy. This is very important to keep energy. Like uh, like for example. Like yesterday, we were sitting, we was talking. Like today, uh, like uh, you see, when I was, uh, I was a completely different person. I don't know you feel this or no. Before our um, uh, our way to the arena, because because I know I have to keep this. Because when I come here, I need energy to give people. You know, like same thing, same thing. When you go to the cage. You have to keep energy. Don't talk too much. Stay calm. Keep everything. When referees say go, fight. You have to fight. You know this is. Um, you have to understand how to use your your uh, uh, your knowledge, your energy. You have to. Sometimes you have to keep. Sometimes you have to give. You know this is like it's. A, I don't know how. Like this is very hard to explain. You know and. Uh, I have, I have on this part. I have so much experience, and uh, you know, even I am not like 60 years old, but I have so much experience on this part. I know how to keep like pressure. When pressure come, Allah give me this. Like I know how to handle this. You know, like uh, more like a lot of people when they, when they who see me, when I go to the cage. When I'm locker room before fight, like, like every day, like fight week, I'm different. Like Monday, I come to the city when I supposed to fight. Saturday, Monday, I'm different. When Tuesday, I'm different. Th Wednesday, Thursday, different. Like Friday on press conference, I'm different. Like when when I go to the cage, like Saturday, I'm completely different. Like all these days and. Uh, when all this feeling come together same time, like uh, when you're scared, when you're nervous, when you wanna smash his face, when you when you wanna do everything, this all feeling comes same time, come on your shoulder, on your shoulder, you know, and you have to handle this. This is like, this is uh, not everybody can handle this, you know. And uh, when I corner someone, when I was fight by myself, you know, I all the time try to learn, you know. 
And uh, like for, even now, when we, I help my guys, like right before the fights, I look at them and I know how what they're feeling. And I talk with them, hey, now you think about this, don't think about this, think about this, you know? And they look like me, like I said, don't be nervous why I know what you feel in your heart. Because uh, I passed this. What you want to pass, I passed this. I already felt this. And uh, you have to handle like this. Don't do this, this, this. Leave these things alone. Just take this feeling, because this feeling gonna help you inside the cage. You know, like same thing. And uh, this is, alhamdulillah, this is like amazing experience. Amazing experience in my life. And, um, and you know, it's like when you're gonna Norway, like, just call me, I'm gonna help you. <laughs> okay. Give him a round of applause, guys. Uh, the champion. But you never answered the question. Why? Why did you fly off that cage like Why that? did you fly like an eagle? At that time, honestly, I lose my emotion. Like, that time, like, uh, if right now, uh, I think it was not a good idea to jump. Like, at that time, like, when everything, like, just finish, like, I'm like, and this guy say, come, it's like, okay. It's like, you know, you know, it's like, like, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu say, never try to fight with someone but if they say oh. you understand <laughs> like if they want okay be patient you know it's like it was like fight time you know I come like I say to my cousin like my brother like I tell him take off your jacket I want you go with one t-shirt and he say hey it's cold in the arena and I told him it's gonna be warm <laughs> believe me you know, because now we go to the war, this is not just like sport for me. This is like a uh, little bit more than sport. Just take off your jacket because I know when I jump, this guy have to jump with me too, you know. <laughs> because how he gonna just look at me. You know, it's, uh, and uh, yeah, right now if I watch, maybe I, I didn't jump like maybe right now because I feel very good. I just drink Yamanese tea, we come here, like, this is different feeling, you know. But, but if I have opponent right now and I supposed to, I, I'm gonna be like completely different uh, person, you know. This is very hard, it's very hard question. Uh, why I jump? It's very hard question, but, but it was very hard to keep emotional, you know, yeah. you know. Uh, I was accepting like, I was accepting like war, you know, I come here, I don't feel nothing, no opponent, no nobody, everybody tap, like, I'm like, why I come here? Where's my opponent? And it's not enough. Something like this. <clears throat> so Brother Habib, could we only have a few minutes left with our questioning? And then the fans can ask the questions. So after, now that you're done, your UFC career, and um, how much more time do you give to reading and studying? And among, I know you read a lot. Among, and you were teaching him some stuff about Sahaba yesterday. Among the Sahaba, which Sahabi do you love the most? And who do you read about the most? And why? So this, nobody never asked me this question. Give him a round of applause, man. Like, honestly, like, uh, uh, every day I try to learn something, you know, it's like every day I try to learn, I learn, <clears throat> because this is, uh, this is why we're living on this life, this is why, this is why we're here, we're not here to fighting or compete with someone, we're not here, of course, I, I was, I was doing this all my life, but same time, like I was learning a lot about my religion, you know. I remember when I was a kid, I was training, I was go to the school to study, and I was uh, study Quran, you know. And uh, only one way my father gave me a very hard time when I have like um, bad days with my teacher in Quran, you know. And I'm like, hey, you just 
coach, you know, but why you, why you never uh, give me a hard time when I train bad or when I miss training? But I was like maybe nine, eight years old. I remember that. And I asked father, but when I go to the Quran, if I have uh, bad days, <laughs> he gave me very hard time, you know. And I asked him, I remember, because at that time my father told me, we living on this life not to become good athletes, not to become like like good teachers or something. We living this life to be good Muslim. And if you... And, uh, And and if you don't know, like if you don't wanna learn the Quran, this is uh, nah, this is uh, Allah kalam. You never gonna be good, like just person. And uh, I remember he like it was couple years. I was with uh, it was one one uh, person. He was very old. He was my teacher. He was my village. He was from my village, it was my village, and uh, and this guy gave me a very hard time, always, you know. And I didn't know him and my f grandfather have bad relationship. And all the time I come to class, this guy say two time, like this, he say two time, I have to go home, he don't give me an exura. And I know when I come home, father gonna check, hey, what surah he give you, you know, it's like, and I asked him, hey, this guy, I feel this guy don't like me. <laughs> He's like, why you feel this? Because like, like I, I watch how he treat other guys and he treat me very bad. Can I change teacher? He said, no, you cannot change teacher. This guy gonna be your teacher next two years, you know? And after that, I've, when I become a little bit older, I understand uh, why father sent me. It was for reason, you know? He gave me hard time to make me better, you know, you know. And uh, I remember, I remember very good. I was in Waduha. I was on this surah one week. Every day I go, he said, two time, no. <laughs> I go home, father give me hard time. It was, I remember this surah very good, you know. <laughs> this guy gave me very hard time, rahimahullah. He, he was, he was very good person, but. He was uh, very old and he was a very good person. Only one thing is like he had a bad relationship with my grandfather and he gave me bad time. <laughs> and, um, uh, yeah, you asked me about Sahabis. Uh, I think uh, I like uh, more, uh, I think if you watch, of course I love all of them, like Abdurrahman ibn Auf. I like this story like a lot. <laughs> because because he was, he was richest, richest Sahabi. He was richest Sahabi and he was helping a lot of people. He was, even in Medina, he was like, almost all Medina, he give money or someone have to give him money, you know? He was like bank system of Medina at that time. And uh, I, I love, I love learn a lot of from him. Of course, I almost learn everything I, th I read from, a lot of different um, historical people I read about him. A lot of things, you know. Of course, I love all of them. Like, when I look at him, I want to be like him, you know. That could be. Round of applause, guys. We, uh, we collectively pray that Allah makes you like Abdurrahman bin Auf. Say, I mean, guys. Um, Brother Khabib, champion Khabib. You, um, Mufti, Mufti was asking you now as a career, as you come to the next part of your life, you have so many things, you're still on the cage, you're still supporting Islam and your whole team. We don't see, we see the training, we see you punching the bag, we see you kicking, we see you sparring. Uh, who's this DC guy? <laughs> you good guy, DC? Yeah, he's good guy, good guy. You guys a little bit look same. <laughs> <laughs> why, why do I look the same? Tell us. Same stomach. Fat guys. He was, he's like you. You know why? Because 
He was like you light heavyweight, now he heavyweight, you heavyweight, you know. <laughs> I'm worried I'm gonna join with you guys. I'm worried a little bit about my weight, you know. I don't wanna be like you guys. Believe me, I like you guys, no, no. <clears throat> Talk here, talk here. I think he came here just to make fun of me. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. You know, so in, in, we see you sparring with him and he brings this best wrestler in the world. You, t you, you beat him up on the ground. He said, DC, who's this BS guy? You know, stuff like that. But we, we don't see the, how do you spiritually prepare for something like this? Your dua, your salah. Because all of our students have exams. They have big moments. They have interviews. Everyone is preparing for their grades, they're studying so hard. You work, you work, you sweat, you lose weight, you know? But what's happening behind the closed doors with you and Allah? Mm. <coughs> this, is, this is between me and Allah, bro. Why are you asking this? <laughs> you think? Like, I never, I never, you know, it's like I try to keep, I try to keep this between me and Allah, you know? And uh, <clears throat> and yes, like I think, uh, like I have not couple people. I think like like a lot of people, like like my close people. Uh, they little bit give me hard time. They say we have to show people what you're doing. Like um, you know, like. Uh, a lot of my project, I don't show the people. I try to keep this secret. I don't like to show people, but a lot of, <coughs> but a lot of people tell me, you have to show this too, because a lot of people look at you, but, but what about uh, things about, okay, what's gonna be between me and Allah? If I'm gonna show everything, and, uh, but what I'm gonna keep? Only salah or like or fasting or to what I'm gonna keep between me and Allah. You know this is this is very important for me too. Important f more than everything in the world. You know what between me and Allah because everybody who sit here, we all know what we have like bad things between mm, between us and Allah. We have good things. We all know. <coughs> And uh, sometimes I try to, I try to keep more good things than bad things. But I, I know it's like I'm not very good on this. <coughs> but uh, this is very important too. This is like very important. And uh, like uh, sometimes I try to do good things. And because of these good things, I ask Allah, please give me victory. Because you know, I did this only because of you. And you know, this is very important. <clears throat> and, and it's like, uh, sometimes, uh, like, uh, my opponents, they don't understand. <clears throat> they don't understand what is this tawakkal. And this is a very big, very big, uh, very big part of for me in front of my opponents, you know. <clears throat> this is, uh, they don't understand what is this tawakkal. And like, I have tawakkal to al uh, Allah. I go to the cage, okay, if I lose, I lose. This is what Allah wants for me. You know, if I win, I'm gonna win. You know, it's like, I don't really care about this. You know, like people, people maybe don't understand this, like, uh, <clears throat> honestly, I don't really care about, uh, like, when I was fighting, about uh, I'm going to win or I'm going to lose. Of course, I don't want to lose, but I strain so hard. Okay, when I go to the cage, my mind is very clear. Alhamdulillah, if I'm going to win, I'm going to be happy. If I'm going to lose, okay, what can I say? What can I do? I'm gonna be happy too because this is decision of Allah, you know, and uh, and uh, this kind of feeling like when I'm training inside the gym, when I cornering my guys, I see how they worry about this night, you know, like competition night, and I told them, hey, 
Be ready because Allah already knows what's going to happen. You know, don't worry about this. Just do your things. Okay, result. We don't control result. Nobody control result. Just do your things. If you win, win. If you lose, lose. But when you go to the cage, do everything for your win. You know, don't give up. Don't give up. Be patient. And that's it. Takbir. So, you know, it's, it's uh, hard to uh, balance this conversation because you have Mufti here and you have me here, which gets too religious sometimes. I think we should spice it up, baby. What do you guys say? You know, uh, who's better a soccer player, you or Cristiano Ronaldo? Fighter. Who's better fighter? Fighter. Like between me and him, of course I'm better fighter, I think. <laughs> but like soccer players, like soccer players, of course this guy is like greatest like player and uh, I think in his mind I I feel he can compete with me on his mind I think because we athletes we always feel you know like for example our feeling I can I can teach you I can teach you I have I have experience to give you you know to make you understand yes light heavyweight but but between when I meet him, I feel he is like on um, on his mind. He's very strong, you know. Champion mind. Yes, you know like there is. I call this athletes. They have three level. Like uh, they have fighters, they have champions, and there is elite. You know, he is elite. I I feel you know because I feel a lot of athletes like. Um, uh, he is elite, you know. He is more than champion on on sport. Like for example, like uh, like you mentioned, like uh, Cormier. I feel he is elite, you know. He was Olympic athlete two time from USA. He was strike force champion, UFC champion, light heavyweight, and heavyweight, and uh, and all the, his losing and all his career. It was when he was very old. It was really old. He was like 39, 40 years old. He don't, he don't even walk, you know. He don't can walk because his back, like so many injuries. I watch his, all his training camps, you know. And uh, I know him when he was to, uh, like in 2012 and 2020 or 19 when he finished, I forget. Like, like this is like... On his prime time, he was the best, you know. He is he is an elite like uh, athlete, you know. Like Cristiano, when I talk with him, I feel on his mind, this guy very strong, you know, very focused, very focused, very strong, and you know, it's like this guy very popular. This guy have so much money, but he is doing these things like he is he stay on the top like last 17, 16, 17 years, you know. This is very hard, you know, and. Uh, some of the athletes they champions, but some of them they more than champion. They elite. You know. And Khabib is an elite. Give a round of applause, guys. I don't say this. <laughs> I say that. <laughs> I say we all say. Do you agree with me? Is Khabib the elite? Is Khabib the goat? Is he the greatest fighter? Inshallah. <laughs> no, no, no. I just want to talk about this. <laughs> I, I want to talk about this, you know, like my my career, you know, like a lot of people, I feel everywhere is conversation, who is the greatest of all time, MMA fighter like this. I never try to be like, like greatest of all time, MMA fighter. I never try to be them, you know, but I know and uh, you know, guys and everybody, all trainers, fans, analytics, like... Uh, <clears throat> And 24 October 2000, uh, 2020, I was on top of this game. I was on top, you know. I was a champion. I defend. And that time I was on top of like pound for pound list. Next day, what happened? I don't care, you know. I come to this sport. I just try to become UFC fighter. I become fighter. Then I compete, I become UFC top 10. 
Then I become UFC contender. Then I become champion. And then when I become champion, I'm like, when they put me, I remember like I was 14 or 13 on Puff of Pound list. And I'm like, okay, let's become on t let, let's become number one Puff of Pound fighter and finish this, you know? At that time, I was number one. I finish. Next day, what happened? I don't care. I just come on this mount mountain and I know Allah don't give nobody to be on the same position all the time. Everything, every, all the time change, you know. I become, now I move. Right now, a lot of discuss who's the greatest. I don't want to be greatest, you know. I don't want to be greatest of all time. But I know I am on the same level with George St. Pierre, Demetrius Johnson, Anderson Silva, John Jones, <laughs> Fedor Emelianenko, all these people, like, we're on, like, same line. I put my name, I talk about, about this sport. This is for M MMA community. This is not for you guys. <laughs> don't, don't worry about this. This is, like, I put myself on same level. And for me, okay, like people ask who's the better, John Jones or Fedor, or John Jones or GSP, GSP or Habib. Like, my opinion, this is like all in the same line, okay? For example, it's very close to be here, it's like Kamaru Usman. Kamaru Usman, he has 15 and all in UFC, you know? He win one more fight, he's gonna break the UFC record. He win one more, f one other fight, he's gonna be only one, fighter of UFC career who have 17-0 in UFC, you know? And uh, it's like he's very close to be on this line, you know? And uh, and I just want to say, I don't want to be greatest of all time. I just put myself same line with these guys, like small kid from nowhere, from mountain, come here, smash everybody. <laughs> Take everything, go back home, you know? This is what I want to say.